Hi folks, today what I'm going to do is remake basically the little gasifier you see in the background, but we're going to make a smaller version of it. We're going to only going to use these two propane tanks instead of three like we used in the background one. We're going to use the same basic steel that we used to make our reduction zone. Let me go ahead now and start cutting into these. First of all, once again, I buy these propane tanks from a yard that's already pre-emptied all the tanks. Even the little bleed-off valves are removed out of them. They've been sitting out in the yard for quite a long time before I purchase them empty and open. Even then, they're not safe to directly cut into. So what I do is I fill them all the way full of water right into the opening of the valve here. So I just stick a tube down into the opening right here. And I because the bleed-off valve that usually goes right where the tip of my thumb is right there, there's a screw right there. Usually there's one there. That's out of there. And you can just pump water in. And when it gets to the top, the water will come out your bleed-off valve right there, letting you know it's full. And I keep water in that the entire time I'm cutting into it until I've removed the larger section. Right now I'm working on our first tank here, and you can see the other tank still in the background, nothing's done to it. What we're building here is the wood holding tank and the reduction zone. And once again, I've just cut both sides out here of the propane tank. One side's a little bigger than the other. Flip it over so you can see that. So there you go. This side here, what I've done is once again, I used a piece of that flat stock steel, rolled that in a circle until I got the right diameter to fit, if I can get this apart fit inside the old ring that sat at the bottom of your propane tank. So this old ring right here. What we're going to do is weld this to there, just like this. So that ring, our reduction zone, is going to weld right onto the upper container. And then this ring that I measured that to to make sure it could slide inside of is going to weld onto the top of that tank back there. And that'll give us that seal once again. We'll use the ring from the bottom of that tank to go around the two of these. That should give us a nice gravity-based seal as the upper mass sits down on the lower ash catch and kind of seals it all together. I'll show you the oven and stove door rope that we put inside of that. So once again, that'll sit on that one. Right now what I got to do is go ahead and weld this onto there get it centered, weld it on, and then once again, like the last one I showed you, I'm gonna make a screen for right here that can open and shut. I'll put the cable on there so we can do the ash dump. Let me get this all welded together. I'll show you what that looks like. What I'm working on now is building our screen for the gasifier. I've got a 29 millimeter hole saw. I just went through here and did a pattern. You can see three across here. And then my outside pieces, wherever one would fit. You can go in between this and add one more hole if you wanted to, but this should work just fine. That screen's going to sit now, right here, inside of our reduction zone. So I've got to build a hinge. You can see I've got some marks. I'm going to cut a little slice of it out right here. Uh, weld a block of metal to the inside of the reduction zone. Put a pin through there. Weld that together so this can open up, just like the last one I showed you. We can use a cable to do that from the other side, and that way you can shake your screen. Just want to quickly show you the completed screen now that it's attached. I've got a hinge built. Got a little stopper right here that stops it from going too far up into there. We've got a hole ready to go for our cable. It's going to go up to the other side so we can shake the screen. That'll give us the ability to open and shut it from the other side. So there you go, folks. That's our screen ready to go now inside of the reduction zone. So at this moment, what I'm doing is beginning to work on the lower ash chamber right here. And what I've done to get the hole that I've cut in there is use the ring from this other tank that I've also used to get the diameter for the reduction zone. So this ring slides over our reduction zone nicely. And I used that, just set that down there, got my center, marked it out and cut that hole in there. Now what I'm going to do is weld this ring to this can right here. That'll allow me to be able to turn that upside down and slide that down inside the ring. All right, so I've got the upper and the lower now able to sit down inside of each other. I finished the screen that was in there. You can see the cable coming off of that, going down to a little peg here that holds the loop. If I unhook the loop, show you down inside, all I gotta do is do that. And we can now clean the screen in between. You probably only wanna shake it just a little bit like that and get it going. Then you pull your loop down up over that peg and it's gonna hold it there and your screen shut. All right, so I've put a coat of paint on it so my hands don't get quite so dirty. That's why I do this before it's really quite done. I've also got the other top that was from our other gasifier project back there. I used the other propane top here as our lid, so you can see down inside of our gasifier now. You can see our air inlet pipes there, facing right towards the center. Now for our air inlets, this time instead of doing eight half inch around holes, what we've done is two one inch around holes. So we've got a one inch pipe six inches long right here going down in there. And right opposite of that, obviously, there's the other six inch piece of one inch pipe. You can see they both protrude just slightly out over the edge of the reduction zone so they're not right up to the edge. 
They extend out towards the middle and that allows us a more direct burn right down the center of the column there. So there you go folks, that is all you're going to need to do to be able to make this gasifier. Basically all the working pieces are done. The only thing I have left to do is find some way to hold our lid down, some spring latch system or something, and I'll show you that when I get it done. But we, now we can dump the ash, we've got airflow into there. I'll put some plugs in these so that you can regulate this well. And right now all we have to do at the end here is put a hole saw hole in our lower container so we have a gas out pipe there and some legs on it. And this gasifier is ready to go. Alright, so we've completed the upper. I showed you I'm kind of sitting down inside of each other. Now I've completed all the seal that we needed to make a nice seal between the upper and the lower. And you can see this rim sticking up right here. That was the old ring on the bottom of the propane tank. The reduction zone itself slides down inside of that ring. This ring's the lip itself fits right here. You can see this gap that I've left. That's another one of the rings from the bottom of the propane tank. I've just expanded it, made it wider, and it allows for the ring from this one to sit up inside that groove. We'll put some oven and stove door rope inside of there, and that'll give us a really nice gravity-based seal for our gasifier. So we can just sit that right down inside of there, and it'll make it so none of the smoke can get back out. You can see the lower is ready to go. I've got the legs on it now. Here's our gas output. It's a two inch output and I've got a reducer on it right now done. So you can see here, simple threaded coupler. Allows you to go to whatever you want from the gasifier. Not much going on inside of there, just an empty tank. We've got the rim welded onto it. All right, so the next step of this, let's make it throw that up in top, put the lid on there. I'll show you what it looks like complete and then we're gonna have to go down to the junkyard. There's a couple RVs down there. Hopefully one of them has the draw in and push out style squirrel cage fan that I'm looking for out of one of their heaters. If we can find that, we'll put it in an inline fan and get this thing up and running. All right, we've completed our smaller gasifier. I just wanted to put it next to the large one so you can see the size difference here. I'm considering taking the lower ash catch, obviously, off of the small one, putting it onto the large one. Taking that small ash catch and putting it on the small one makes sense. Uh, obviously, for the amount of ash difference each one's going to produce, but we may leave them like that. I just might build a new bottom for that one. All right, so we're going to do a quick test fire up of our little mini gasifier that we just got done building. You can see here I've got my water tank ready to go. This is, a, I think, a pressure tank, an air pressure tank. I've hold sawed a couple holes in there. That's a one and a half inch piece of pipe going all the way through. I've got a coupler hooking it to our gasifier here. So the wood smoke's gonna come out of the gasifier, go through that pipe through the middle of this tank. We're gonna fill that tank full of nice cold water. And then the smoke's gonna come out here and into our draw fan. I've reversed the fan around that we had on the larger one. So now that it'll actually create a draw and you can feel the air blowing out here. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead Set this thing up, get it full of water, fill that full of wood, and give this our first primary test fire up. Alright folks, so here we go. We're going to give our test fire up. You can see down here at the end where I have our burn area. we got a water tank, everything ready to go. I've already put a little bit of this wood in there, but we're going to put some fine wood first down in the bottom like that. Then we're going to take some newspaper and try to strip it up. Set that newspaper right on top of that fine wood. And we're going to get that going once it's up to temperature and there's a nice cold bed going. I'm going to take another bucket of wood and the rest of that one, dump it in here, put the lid on it. We're going to do our experiment. All right, so here we go. Let's get it lit. See if I can get this to light without the wind hassling me. And there we go. We're going to drop it down in there. All right, so now that we've got smoke, give me a little while. Let it get up to temperature. Once it's there, I'll fill the whole thing full of wood. We'll put the cap on it. We'll do our test. All right, folks, so what we're going to do is test out our wood gas. You can see the smoke coming out. So there you go. It's now on fire. You saw the smoke disappear. Got some newspaper here just to do the burn test for you. So now the newspaper's on fire. You can see there's a flame there. And right now, that is a nice clear flame coming from our wood gas. You can't see any of the flame. That's how nice and clean it burns. Let me go ahead and blow it out if I can, and then we'll relight it again. So there you go, there's the smoke. Hit it with the flame, all the smoke disappears. And we can do that paper test again just to show you that there is a flame there. There you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed folks watching how to make your own wood gas system. Potentially here this little wood gasifier may be put in a vehicle. We're looking at putting it in a little Dodge D50 truck, seeing how well it runs. You can see here it's still on fire, burning nicely. I'll show you that by blowing it out again.
quick shot of it lighting on fire there for you. Just hit it with the torch real quick. I got some wind gusting all over the place, so the wind can come from the opposite direction and put it out. But if you look down inside of there, you can see our smoke rolling inside of that, lighting on fire. See some of the flames inside the tube there. Turn off the torch so you don't hear that in the background here. So there you go, folks. That's a nice up-close personal look at the flames of the wood gas. Just a quick shot here of what happens if you do this. You see how that smoke ignite down in there?